Hello and welcome to lecture one of conceptual physics. So in this course we will be talking about well physics and so to give you an idea of what physics is I'm going to kind of give you a historical perspective. Physics as we know it really started with Isaac Newton. Uh, his publication of the Principia in 1687 uh, developed what we now refer to as classical mechanics uh, in a slightly different form but essentially the same and you might have heard F equals MA, right? This is his famous equation. Um, it says that the force is e equal to the mass times the acceleration. What it really says is that force is the, uh, the thing that causes change in motion. The usual state in the universe is that everything stays the same. Either it's not moving or it is moving at a constant velocity. And if there's any change in that motion, then it's because of a thing that Newton called a force which was a strange thing to people back in that time because the, the, the primary force he was considering was gravity. And he was basically telling people that uh, the Earth pulls on the moon and that's why it you know, revolves around us every night. Uh, and, but you, you know, pulled with what, right? Where is there an invisible hand that is tugging on this thing? You, you couldn't see anything pulling on it, uh, but it was, it was there. And uh, so that was Newton's uh, big breakthrough. Um, so this was, you know, again, in the 17th century. And then later in the 18th century, Another big breakthrough was uh, the development of electricity and magnetism by James Clark Maxwell. He basically took the existing laws that pertain to electricity, electric force, and uh, magnetic force, uh, and unified them into a single coherent theory, uh, discovering that light was what he called an electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic oscillation. Uh, so light being connected somehow to electric fields and magnetic fields was quite a revelation back in that time. And so these two elements, classical mechanics and electricity and magnetism, uh, constitute the bulk of what we call classical mechanics or classical physics today. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I completely forgot to put in any thermodynamics. But the, the advances in thermodynamics came at different times. And... Uh, But a lot, most of the work was done in the 19th century. Uh, but thermodynamics gave rise to a later version of that, what we'd call statistical mechanics, which took place in the 20th century. But thermodynamics, the transfer of heat and things like that, is also part of classical physics. Um, then we move into what I call the modern era of, of physics. And this really started with uh, Planck's observation on the quantization of energy. It was a, a, a very weird thing, or so they thought this idea that you cannot increase the energy of these subatomic particles uh, <clears throat> in a continuous way. So instead of you know, going up a ramp, it's like walking up a staircase. You can only go up in discrete steps. Uh, and this has profound implications on everything from the spectrum of the radiation coming from the sun uh, to the way that subatomic particles behave. Uh, speaking of subatomic particles, atomic physics, right, really uh, was another big advancement uh, that was built upon the atomic hypothesis that all that we know is matter, right, the elements are composed not of what the, <clears throat> uh, the, the classical Greeks, like Aristotle, would have thought they were, but rather out of uh, things called atoms. And developments of this actually started quite early on in, in uh, the 19th century, uh, and maybe even in the 18th, no, more than the 19th century. Um, but really the atomic hypothesis had become uh, es established as a fact in the 20th century, and so it kind of falls into modern physics as well. And, and finally, special and general relativity. Uh, you're sure you all heard of E equals mc squared, Einstein's famous equation relating mass and energy, um, and special relativity, which was published in 1905, kind of overthrew the classical notion of space and time uh, established by Galileo. General relativity was published 10 years later, and replaced our earlier theories about classical mechanics, about how gravitational bodies move and why. Uh, but we're not going to go into a great deal of detail on that right now, and probably not at all in this course. But let's move on to what I'm calling novel physics. So because of the advances in the 20th century uh, in special and general relativity, quantum mechanics and atomic physics, uh, we had two really new branches. Uh, one you could call quantum field theory, or you could culminate it in what's known as the standard model of physics. Uh, you've probably heard of quarks before. Uh, these are the constituents of protons and neutrons. 
And so these basic things in combination with electrons and their, I guess you'd call them cousins, uh, comprise the basic constituents of all matter. Everything is made of quarks and electrons and then a few other things. But uh, we won't go into any detail on this and probably won't even cover it. Um, cosmology, you've probably heard of the Big Bang. That's an idea about the origin of the universe. Uh, this falls into cosmology. It began with observations made by, uh, by Hubble, uh, probably in the 1940s, I would guess. Uh, his observations that distant stars are moving away from us at a uh, high velocity, and the farther away these stars are, the faster they move away from us. And uh, this basically led to this expanding universe idea. And so the natural question is, is if it's expanding, then if sometime in the past it must have been smaller. So if we kind of reverse time and go backwards, we see it going not like this, expanding, but contracting from into a single point, that single point being the Big Bang. Um, there are actually still unresolved questions in cosmology. Uh, dark matter and dark energy are two of them that you've probably heard about in movies or on uh, read in a magazine. Um, again, not something that we're going to cover in conceptual physics uh, necessarily. We may talk about it at some point. Finally, I put in here just uh, speculative physics, right? The stuff that's really new now. And uh, one of these items is string theory, which is this idea that uh, instead of thinking about matter as being comp composed of little point particles, right? Because when I talk about a proton or an electron, right, I, I usually draw it as a little dot. And uh, I would think of that as a particle. Uh, and string theory kind of replaces these particles, right, that might have some velocity v, let's say, with a string. That's a terrible string. It's a, a vibrating string. And the frequency of its vibration uh, would correspond to you know, its mass or energy. Um, and we won't talk about that in the slightest, but it is kind of the new exciting stuff that, that people you know, work on uh, in the, the, these times in physics. And that is a general overview of kind of what physics is composed of. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.